Good evening, Vice President Rohde, Superintendent Thompson, and members of the board. Before we introduce you to the heart of our district, our students, and in particular, the students tonight who have received scholarships that I think will knock your socks off, because I've heard the total, and it's pretty awesome. We wanted to take an opportunity to allow you to see our students and our district through the lens of the Wichita business community. Several of you were with us um, about a week and a half ago, the Wichita Regional Chambers over the years, or uh, the awards, the Honors Night Banquet, where we received the Over the Years Award. This is an honor that the Chamber bestows on corporate citizens who have for years and decades, in our case, 148 years, provided extraordinary service and have been good corporate citizens to Wichita. And I think it would be safe to say that not only did the story you're about to see in a video that's about two minutes long, and we really wanted all of our guests here to see it because it is why we do what we do. After the video was showed, Dr. Thompson and four of our Super SAC students went to the stage in front of about 750 business leaders. And I kid you not when I tell you that our kids and our fearless leader blew folks in the audience away. They blew them away. And this is the object that Dr. Thompson was presented with to symbolize the district being recognized as an over the year recipient. And we wanted to pause and take an opportunity to allow you and all of our guests today to see the video. So if you would take a look at the video monitors, I'd like you to see this before we move forward. <coughs> We've been educating kids in the Wichita Public Schools for 150 years. We graduate 2,600 high school students a year. And that's important to our community because we are a strong contributor to the workforce in Wichita. We have a strong impact in the economic development in this city. We employ 6,500 employees. It's $32 million a month. What our employees do is they take those paychecks and they give right back to our community through mortgages that they pay, through the vehicles that they drive, the groceries that they buy. Another aspect of economic development that we provide to our community is through the vendors. All of our food that we use in our community for our kids, we buy those from our local vendors. From the business community's perspective, we're excited about what Wichita Public Schools are doing. They are the largest single source of talent in our region and we need that to continue. I've had the privilege of seeing the district through the eyes of a business person, as a parent in the district, and also as principal for a day, which was a unique opportunity to be directly engaged in the schools. Really got to see the connectivity and the collaboration that's happening in our classrooms, whether it's the team environments that the students are working in, or just the fact that our staff, our faculty know many of these students by name and know their stories. So there's a lot of collaboration going on in our schools. We've gone out and done a lot of listening to our community members, our community businesses, and having the opportunity to find out what is it that they want from us. We then have aligned ourselves to our business partners, which has been a tremendous help. One of the areas in which we've aligned very nicely has been our aviation industry. And we're looking forward to continuing to listen and learn about what is it that our community needs. I think the challenge that all of us have as we're building this workforce for the future, K through 12 and in post-secondary, is really teaching students the importance of what I would call relevant skills or critical life skills. Teamwork, listening, critical thinking, communicating. Those are arts for workforce success. And I believe that the district has done a really good job of putting a laser focus on helping that education occur to all of their students. It's imperative that the business community and the school districts remain collaborative where we can build our pipeline of talent. They are the ones that can help lead this city to a better future. Kids are our future. I mean, we have to invest in them. It's important for us to see their value and their worth so that then we can give them the tools that they need to be able to go out into this world and make it a better place.
And speaking of economic development, we usually don't get a lot of distinguished visitors, but I saw Jeff, Mayor Jeff Longwell walk in. Jeff, where are you at? There you are. Thank you, Thank you for being here. I saw you making eye contact with someone. I think they wanted you to come down to the empty chair. <laughs> <laughs> I am so proud of our district community every time I have a chance to see that video. And it really is all about the kids that you're about to meet. The community recognizes that our students shape the future as one of our former students is doing now. West, West High grad? West High grad. So you, you never know where that leadership is going to come from. So we are thrilled. I don't know if any of you who were there might like to say a few words. Um, if you would, we would certainly welcome that. And if not, we will invite Mr. Alvarez forward and allow you to see the young people that our work is all about. Ernestine. I just was so impressed with the speech, speeches that our, our seniors made. They were telling us about the scholarships they've gotten and their plans, and the plans were just amazing. What they were, everything from nursing to journalism to business to go to uh, Wichita U, WSU Tech. To and the Air those, Force Academy. They were so gracious and, and calm and sophisticated. We were really, really well represented and well uh, shown off by those, those young people. And we just are really grateful to the chamber for this honor. I really feel like that the district has earned it, but I really also know that a lot of times good things happen and we just forget to look. And so thank you to the chamber for noticing that we are a good district and that we make a big impact. And though I have my back to all of the parents here and the staff, um, this was an opportunity to celebrate the investment of an entire community and parents who have, have faith in us and who have sent their children to receive what I would argue is the most amazing education around that they can receive. So without further ado, I'm going to invite Mr. Alvarez forward, our Assistant Superintendent of Secondary Schools. I've had a chance to see what he's gonna share with you and I'm really, really excited about some of the great news we have to share, not to mention the extraordinary students you're gonna have the opportunity to meet. Thank you, Wendy. Good evening, Vice President Rohde, Superintendent Dr. Thompson, members of the board. This is an exciting evening for us as we get to see our students who have earned the scholarships uh, for their post-secondary success. So as we work to empower all students with the 21st century skills and knowledge necessary for success, we are preparing our students to dream, believe, and achieve through college and career opportunities. Tonight I am joined by a few amazing students that we will honor for their achievement and pursuit of this college career readiness. So much so they are in high demand by many colleges and universities across the state and the country. Before we recognize these students, let me share a few statistics with you. 2,932. The number of students to graduate with the 2019 senior class of Wichita High Schools, this is an increase of 322. That deserves a round of applause. <laughs> 811, the number of students receiving scholarship offers for next year, and the big number, 43,831,396. This is the amount of dollars in scholarships awarded to the class of 2019, an increase of 5,532,742 from last year. I have asked our building leaders to assist in recognizing students from their respective schools. So as they recognize the students by name, we ask the students to wave when they come in. And these students will represent the top 10 scholarship recipients or any student that's receiving $40,000 or more. Some students are also at some events that have been made up with all the rain, so uh, they may not all be here, but I'm sure the principals will still uh, recognize the students that have won or these scholarship opportunities. So I'm going to start with East High School Principal Sarah Richardson.
right. Dr. Thompson, members of the board, uh, my pleasure to recognize the top 10 scholarship winners from Wichita High School East. Very proud of them. We have first Melanie Barksdale attending Colorado University. Second, we have Zev Barmore, University of Michigan. Wendy Delora, Wichita State University. Sam Hutchinson, University of Southern California. Alyssa Jones, University of Tulsa. James Owen, University of Tennessee. Brianna Ray, Smith College in Massachusetts. Kendriana Stewart, Oral Roberts University. Susanna Young, Barry University in Miami. And Bryn Walker, Jackson State University. Yeah, we'll ask the students just to make their way around to the other side as we get ready for our next school, which is Heights High School, Principal Sherman Paget. On behalf of Heights High School, I appreciate the honor to introduce our top 10 scholarship students. We have not present, but Ashton Dirksen. She's gonna attend Allen Community College. We have Brissa Castillo, Wichita State University. Wave. <laughs> we have Aiden Gatenbean. Gatenbean. He's gonna attend Barton Community College. Sam Gleason, William Woods University. <laughs> Kaylin Hanna, and she's going to attend Wichita State University. <laughs> Courtney Hawkins is going to attend Alabama A&M, <laughs> home of the Bulldogs. We have Patrick Matson. He's going to attend Southwestern College. Oscar Rivas, and he's going to attend Wichita State University. And Ashley Vega, she's going to attend Wichita State University. One final student is Brooklyn Nelson, and she's undecided. Thank you. Our next school is our host school, North High School, Principal Lori Doyle. Good evening. Our scholarship recipients this evening are Manuel Aguilar, Fringe University, Mechanical Engineering. Edie Fernandez, Wichita State University, Dental Hygiene. <laughs> Nayeli Gallo, University of Central Missouri, Pre-Dentistry. <laughs> Thomas Kuchera, Wichita, oh, I'm sorry, my mistake. Bethel, Education History. Ismari Martinez, University of Kansas, Pre-Med, Human Biology. <laughs> Fatima Ortiz, Newman University, Education, English. <laughs> Frederico Sebastian Renteria, Vassar University, Pre-Med, Biochemistry, a QuestBridge finalist. Antonio Rocha, Northwestern University, Chemical Engineering, QuestBridge finalist, and Gates finalist. 
Esmeralda Sanchez Torres, Wichita State University, Mechanical Engineering. We have two students that are absent this evening, Emily Guerrero, Wichita State University Biology uh, Conservation, and Lucy Mwangi, Newman University Pre-Med Biology. Our next school is going to be Wichita Northeast Magnet High School, Principal Matt Creaseman. I'd like to thank the Board of Education for giving us an opportunity to recognize these outstanding students. We have three not in attendance, and I'll save them for last to read the ones who are here today. Jayla Dennis, University of Tulsa. Tatum Ernt, Johnson County Community College. Deron Jacobs, Southwestern College. V. Lee, the University of Texas at Dallas. <laughs> Jessica Orchard, Wichita State University. <laughs> and she's receiving the Koch Scholarship. Evan Saga, Newman University. <laughs> and he's re receiving the Cardinal Scholarship. Uh, Sabrina Sadoff, Wichita State University. Sabrina is receiving the Wallace Scholarship. Michelle Tong, Newman University. And she's receiving the Cardinal Scholarship also. Addie Went, Wichita State University. And three other outstanding students that aren't here tonight. Raina Berry, McPherson College. Keaton Davis, Wichita Tech. And Elizabeth Yearman for Friends University. Our next school is Northwest High School, Eric Hofer Holdeman, principal. I'm gonna also, from, from this point forward, if we could hold the applause till all have been recognized, and then we could do a one big round of applause for all the students at that particular school. Good evening, thank you for this opportunity. From Northwest High School, Logan Engelmeyer, Friends University. Josh Carter, Southwestern College. Kaylee Dryden, Barton County Community College. She wasn't able to be here tonight. Brees Hall, Iowa State, wasn't able to be here. He actually graduated at semester and has started his football career at Iowa State. Marcus Hicks, University of Oklahoma. <laughs> Lucas Hofer Holdeman, Bethel College. Trent Landenberger, Colorado Christian College. Leilani Lemus, Wichita State. She's also a WSU Close Scholar. She wasn't able to be here tonight. Emily Nelson, Friends University. She is a STEM Promise Scholarship winner. Mayla Stevens, Southwestern College. Megan Altgilbers, Wichita State. She is a WSU Close Scholar and she was not able to be here tonight. No, Wichita Northwest High School. You'll probably be the last school to take your, your place over there if it's getting a little crowded. Next school up is South High School, Principal Care Lady. Good evening, Board of Education. It's my honor to introduce to you some young people that have worked very hard in their four years at South High School, and we're very, very proud of them. We have Dejiana Wilson. <laughs> Sean Hallisey. Duran Dudley. Let me back up, I'm sorry. Dejiana is going to Southwestern College, my fault. Duran is going to High Point. 
We have Piper Pritchard going to Wichita State University. Jonathan Avery, who's undecided. We have Amethyst Thomas going to Bethel. Elena Gutierrez going to Allen County Community College. Sam N. Badaga going to WSU. Samantha Vaughn, Hutchison Community College. Brian Drachewski going to Wichita State University. There's a couple of folks that I think are real important in our high schools. Uh, our counselors do an amazing <coughs> job with our students with guidance and the proper classes that they should choose. Another person is our college and career coordinator. And at South High, we're very blessed with Ms. Courtney Bell, who spends an enormous amount of time helping our young people reach their dreams and their potential. And with it being National uh, Teacher Appreciation Week, South High has an amazing staff as well as all over the district, and we couldn't do it without them. And this is a K-12 uh, project all the way through. Thank you. All right, I'll have you guys just move over as much as you can. We only have three more schools left, so we should be able to get everybody in. It's pretty exciting when you can't fit them all in here with all the, the scholarship awards. Next school is Southeast High School Principal Bruce Dieterding. Good evening. We're going to help you uh, fit the other three schools in here as we're competing with a number of other activities this evening. But tonight we bring to you our, our top 10 scholarship winners. We have Amari Cooper, who'll be attending Kansas City Art Institute. Dayton Evans will be at Bethel. William, William McCanlam will be going to Newman. Caden Miller, Wichita State. Peter Wynn, Newman. Daniela Renteria, Newman. Dina Trong, Newman. And then the best of the best, <laughs> Amaya Stevenson, who will be attending Newman. <laughs> Jamasia Cox, Southwestern. Gina DeFazio, Heston College, and Markel Randall, who will be attending Kansas City Art Institute. Thank you. Our next high school is West High School Principal Joel Hudson. Oh, Christina Murray will be taking Joel Hudson's place to announce for West High School. I do want to just tell Joel Hudson is retiring this year. We just want to wish him the best. Uh, he's done a great job with the West High community, so we will miss him and wish him well. Christina Murray. Good evening. I am Christina Murray. I am one of the assistant principals at West High School. Tonight, I would like to present the top scholarship award recipients from Wichita West High School. Uh, Sebastian Salcedo Vaquera, he'll be attending Newman University or Friends University. Jared McGeehy, be attending Friends University. Zion Parks Jackson, will be attending Southwestern College. Brendasia Johnson, be attending Heston College. Blade Dalmont is undecided. Xavier Sellers, will be attending Mid-America Nazarene University, and Karan Welch will be attending Newman University. We also had two students presented with the Friends USD 259 STEM Promise Scholarship today. Uh, those two students couldn't be here, but they are Carly Johnson and Jessica Estrada Cruz. The total scholarship amount awarded uh, for our seniors as of May 3rd uh, is $1.7 million. The current enrollment of our senior students is 302. Of those, 50 students have reported having some type of scholarship offered. Uh, after high school, 47% of our seniors will be attending college, a tech school, or a vocational school. 2% of our seniors will, go, uh, will be going to the military, 
and 12% will be going into the workforce. Thank you. And our final school is Chester Lewis Academy, which does house our Wichita Alternative as well as Wichita Virtual. Good evening. Um, unfortunately, our students could not make it this evening with uh, work-related incidents and things of that nature. Um, but I would like to share who our students will be. But before I do that, I'd like to point out um, Ms. Brianna Rennick is our counselor, primarily with the virtual. Um, Danea Kramer works with the alternate students, and Lee Miller uh, works with the seniors with our new Town East Learning Center that opened up this year, of which we have some students here. So, uh, Ainsley Tommy will be going to Butler County Community College. Yamalith Quintana will be going to WSU Tech. Cade Bolin is going to Rockhurst University. Uh, and Adriana Gallegos will be going to Allen County Community College. Thank you. Please join me one more time in congratulating these wonderful students for a job well done. <laughs> students, before you leave, just a reminder, we will be taking a picture in the Kiva area at the courtyard, so you'll exit out that way, but please don't do it just yet. I have learned for the success to occur, it takes a great team. Our college and career coordinators work to prepare and help students choose their post-secondary post opportunities, as well as our counselors. Our principals represent their outstanding staff who work faithfully to make sure this type of opportunities do occur. In fact, this is true, what Ms. Lydia talked about, this is a K-12 success. So at this time, I would like any district employee that is in the audience to please stand so you can be recognized. Any district employee, elementary, through secondary, pre-K-12. <laughs> it also takes a family, parents, grandparents, family members. If you would please stand, because we want to thank you and thanks for sharing your students and partnering with your schools for the success of your child. So all family members. So thank you again, uh, if there's any questions or comments from the board. Julie. Well, there's uh, a lot of really awesome students here and congratulations to all of you on your success. Uh, but Mr. Alvarez, could we, out of all this bunch of great students, could you pick out a couple to come up and share with us their, about their scholarships and their plans so that we can can hear uh, hear from a couple of them. We, oh, there, yeah. we will we will take a couple, which is two. So we got one. Um, is there another one that would like to? There you go. We got. There we go. Come awesome. on, go ahead. Come, come on up. We'll go three. Cool. Thank thank you so much for being willing to share. We want to hear from you, students. You guys put us on the spot, but it's okay. <laughs> All right. My name is Dejiana Wilson. He mentioned it before. But I go to Wichita South High School and I'm a senior. Uh, scholarships combined, I received offered 2.07 million and that was from athletics and also academics. I decided to go to Southwestern College on the Mount Builder Spirit Scholarship. So with my financial aid and everything, it's a full ride, so that'd be pretty good. But I just want to stress the fact, <laughs> I just want to stress the fact that teachers and other staff inside of our schools do a tremendous job of making sure that their students are put into place and make sure, making sure that they're post high school ready. And it doesn't matter if it's college or if it's something else. They do their best to try to make sure that we are going to be successful and I appreciate that for all the students and as well as the teachers and administrative to take their time to devote their, to, to take their time to, to make something bigger than what they are. So I just appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, can you repeat the question again for me? Uh, tell us about your, well, your name and uh, your scholarship, where you're going, and just some of your plans. 
Okay, um, my name is Markel Randall. I'm a senior at Southeast High School. Um, I've received, well, combined, um, I've received a full ride to Kansas City Art Institute. Um, I've had a few full ride offers from like WSU and K-State. Um, I plan to study photography and filmmaking when I get there. Awesome, congratulations. Okay, so my name is Antonio Rocha. I'm a student from North High School. Um, my plans after high school is to go to Northwestern University and study chemical engineering. Um, I got through the, to Northwestern through the QuestBridge regular decision, and the QuestBridge schools are known to meet 100% of financial need, and just um, I got just getting admitted into those schools means that you will get the aid you need. And so total, I got offered a little under $1 million. Wow. I didn't count it out exactly, but it's <laughs> around there. <laughs> um, I only got into two QuestBridge schools and I also got offered uh, some full rides around uh, state schools, but obviously I'm gonna go to Northwestern. Um, <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to North because the diverse community there is just something really amazing and it's taught me so much about some issues that should be looked into. Uh, I said I want to go into chemical engineering. I want to explore uh, some factors of obesity and hopefully reduce those climbing rates in the upcoming future. So, awesome. yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Ernestine, I got you three times. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just want to speak to the parents. I just think of all the yards and yards of denim that you've put on those behinds. <laughs> I think of all the nights you stayed up with the crying child, the ear, ear aches, and all of the things. I'm almost going to get cho choked up because I know what parents have done. Thank you, parents. It doesn't go without saying this is a pretty smart group that we got behind us, and it's an honor and a privilege just to be in the same room with them. It is. And there's one other factor that does prove how smart they are, and this is a tradition that the board's been going through for several years at this night. None of these kids are going to Nebraska. <laughs> That doesn't tell you anything. I don't know what, you, what else to do. <laughs> Parents, faculty, students, thank you very much and congratulations and enjoy what you've got. It is only fitting that it is staff and teacher appreciation week. So looking out at the students, we can tell that all of you, all staff and teachers have done a wonderful job inspiring, educating these young minds. So we look forward to the great things that are gonna occur with all you students here. Students, you can exit here or this side, but we're gonna take a picture in the courtyard. Thank you so much. We're gonna take a brief pause while everybody's leaving and re-entering the room. Continuing on, Wendy. Thank you for the opportunity to present your second Good News Award for this evening. Uh, I heard our earlier JROTC honoree say, I think you set me up. <laughs> and I think I heard those words about a week ago when we had the opportunity to visit the classroom of our next honoree. We are here tonight for you to congratulate and applaud our 2019 Excellence in Public Service Award recipient. The Excellence in Public Service Award annually honors three public service employees, one from the city, one from the county, and one from the Wichita Public Schools for their outstanding work in their public sector job, but also, and perhaps equally important, in the community as well. It really is about both sides of that scale and the honorees 
such as Ms. Hedrick, one of our former honorees, truly do um, represent the best of the best in the world of public service. Each award winner receives a $2,500 check to do with what they wish and will be the guest of honor at a reception that we are holding Thursday. Thursday, I thought it was this week. Uh, Dr. Thompson is a member of the selection committee along with leaders from the city and the county. And this year was the 31st consecutive year that the DeVore Foundation supported this award. They have placed their family's finances uh, in a position to actually reward honorees with a cash prize as well as the really cool honor to be celebrated for their public service. So it seems only fitting that as we begin Teacher Appreciation Week this week, our 2019 honoree is a teacher. And so before I talk about you, Ms. Carla Breckenridge, I'm gonna ask you to come forward and join me. The Wichita Public Schools recipient in 2019 is Ms. Carla Breckenridge, a fifth grade teacher from Buckner Performing Arts and Science Magnet. Carla began her service to the Wichita Public Schools in 2000 as a substitute teacher, and her love for kids and commitment to public education inspired her to become a classroom teacher. Today, she is well respected as an innovator and a leader among her colleagues. And having been in her classroom last week when we set her up and surprised her, her kids love her. And it was really heartwarming to see them be so happy for her to be honored with this award. So this year, her students researched the Dockham set-in, interviewed Dr. Galen Vesey, a member of the original set-in. They toured the site of the former Dockham set-in, um, and they were also part of the KPTS documentary that was aired this past fall. She sponsors an empowerment group for fifth grade girls to address self-esteem and making healthy choices, and she is an active almost exhaustingly active to look at all of the things that she does. She's an active community volunteer. She is a member of the Wichita Alumna Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated, participating in many of their educational programs and initiatives that support young people through scholarship, community, and sisterhood. She has also been actively engaged in the Wichita Chapter of the Lynx Incorporated since 1992, and its umbrella program, the African American Male Empowerment Institute. They are the annual sponsors of Botillion, which I know you are all familiar with. One of the most impressive contributions um, when we had the opportunity to re review Carla's nomination is her development of the African American High School Leadership Conference, or Leadership U. In 2012, she created the conference, enlisting the help of key community leaders and sponsors to provide an interactive and engaging conference which now serves over 1,120 students and parents. This is in her free time. <laughs> Carla and her husband, Lorenza, who is here, have four grown sons, Lorenza, Landon, Lyndon, and Christian Garner. Carla and two other honorees, Carmen Johnson from the city of Wichita and Daniel Schrant from Sedgwick County, will, as I noted earlier, be acknowledged and celebrated this Thursday. So, Dr. Thompson, before we turn the microphone over to Ms. Breckenridge, I would invite you to come forward and present the certificate of recognition to your sorority sister and our distinguished teacher, Ms. Carla Breckenridge. Thank you, Superintendent Dr. Thompson. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson and the Wichita uh, School Board members. Thank you very much. The last five days have been nothing short of exhilarating, and I really appreciate the opportunity to, to be recognized on this, my 13th year as an educator in the Wichita Public School District as the Excellence in Public Service award recipient. It has been truly an honor and I really am humbled. 
I love teaching. I love building relationships with students and parents, and I love impacting their lives in ways that I sometimes get to find out early on, but it's even more exciting to find out later on in their lives um, just the impact that I'm able to impart on them. Um, this is my passion, and it has always been my passion, working with young people, building those relationships early, early in my life, long before I ever, ever thought about becoming a teacher. Um, so I'd like to begin now just briefly by thanking you, the Wichita Public School District, the Selection Committee, the DeVore Foundation for this auspicious award. I really appreciate that. I'm, as again, I said, I'm humbled, I'm honored, and I'd like to thank my family for their support. My husband, Lorenzo Breckenridge Jr., who has often been the um, uh, chaperone, oftentimes <laughs> at the very last minute when I needed him, and my children for calling on their friends when I needed them <laughs> to make sure that they knew that I was going to either pick them up to take them somewhere or I needed them to be um, at an event. I also want to um, thank the two organizations for their support, and that would be the Wichita Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta and the Wichita Chapter of Lynx, both community service organizations um, that impact the lives of the community in which we live and serve, and I appreciate their unwavering support. I also want to thank the Wichita community because it really isn't just me by myself. I couldn't do anything without the support of the community and families and children, uh, who, who it really is all for. I finally, I'd like to thank Mrs. Banks, my principal at Buckner, for seeing the leader in me, for supporting me by providing leadership opportunities in my building to not only grow professionally, but to also support my envision to start Boss Girls, our empowerment group for our fifth grade girls at our school. And then I'd like to thank Mrs. Gwen Duggins, who nominated me for the award, who has, was the silent observer and witness for the contributions that really weren't for self-gain, but they're for our students. Thank you. Mrs. Breckenridge, could you come back down? We're not done with you yet. <laughs> ben? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Breckenridge, I, I know this is probably not news to you, but your positive reputation precedes you in, in full force. Um, your, your, when your name came up for this award, um, I already knew what you've done and your positive influence is not only felt at Buckner or just District 1, but the entire city knows the good work that you do in day in and day out. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Long before she was famous, I knew her as Carla Breckenridge, mother to one of my son's friends as they <laughs> grew up at Gammon. So our third opportunity tonight is a great celebration of the academic achievement of our student athletes. It's been really cool this year to have not only our high school student athletes, but our middle school student athletes as well. So without further ado, we are going to conclude good news with the superintendent's challenge recognition. Before we do that, I just I realized I forgot. The little discs that are by your computers, um, those were discs that we gave to participants, to attendees at the chamber event during the reception that were created by middle school students and their teachers on the 3D printers that you have allowed to be placed in all of their classrooms. So very cool, and we wanted you to have a copy. So without further ado now, I am pleased to invite Jay Means forward and Mr. Alvarez and Mr. Garner to celebrate our student athletes. And, and Dr. Thompson. Well, without further ado, we're going to get right into the awards. Uh, I know there's been a lot of recognition and it was exciting seeing all the scholarships, the, the name, and, and I recognize a lot of those. Those kids are our student athletes too. So. Anyway, without further ado, we're going to get started with the middle school, and we are going to recognize the winter sports, the basketball for the middle school. We'll do the spring sport later, and then we'll get into the high school spring sports. So 
as I announce your school's name, coaches, uh, athletes, please come down and we'll just gather around again. So uh, for middle school and basketball, second place was Hamilton with a 3.41 GPA. I may just get to give that to them. All right. All right. I, I might add, too, if there are some that aren't present tonight, you guys know what the weather's been like. So uh, there are a lot of makeup uh, competitions going on. So in first place uh, in basketball, Allison with a 3.55. And I might add for the middle school, we just took the two teams, put them together, uh, and, and that's where we got the grade point average. Congratulations. And I would tell you that this data came from 438 student athletes and a combined GPA of 3.12. So, okay, on to high schools. Uh, we'll start with the girls swimming. And if you do remember, we also started a most improved this year since we've got the second year coming. Uh, and most improved was Southeast, girls swimming. In second place, Northwest with a 3.45. And the winner of girls swimming was East High with a 3.49. Just heard her say by four one hundredths, man. Every point counts. Yes. Okay, and boys tennis, most improved, South High. In second place, Heights with a three point three one. And in first place, East High with a 3.45. Okay, <laughs> and boys golf, most improved was Southeast. And they also got second place with the 3.31. And in first place in boys golf was Heights High School with a 3.40. In girls soccer, most improved, we had a tie, so they both get to be recognized. It's East and Heights, most improved. Come on down, Sarah. <laughs> In second place was South High with a 3.14. And in first place, Heights, 3.29. Okay, and softball, most improved was South High. And they were also second place, 3.04, and I know definitely they were playing a softball game today, yes. <laughs> and in first place was North High with a 3.33, and they may have still be playing. Oh, they made it. All right.
<laughs> yes, I know. Yes. I think they came just from the game, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. In baseball, most improved was Southeast. Now I have to, I see Mr. Terrell's in the uh, audience. I don't think you ever created a tiebreaker, did you? Uh, did you? Well, I made one up too, so I did have it. But anyway, we had a tie for first and second, and I had to break the tie because I don't know how you do a traveling trophy for two teams. But in second place in baseball, South High, 3.04. And first place, Southeast, with a 3.04. Southeast hiding behind you. <laughs> okay, in track, most improved was South. And in second place was Northwest with a 2.98. And actually, South High Track is going to get the trophy also. They most improved and also first place, 3.06. There you go. There. <laughs> And I'd just like to tell you one last thing. This, these GPAs were based on 1,471 students, and the combined GPA was a 2.99. So, again, thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you very much again.